Hey everybody out there in Radio Land, yo buddy Johnny Rock, and you're tuned into the Worldwide Johnny Rock and Roll Radio Show, and it is now time for the Singer Songwriter Showcase. Tonight our special guest is Kevin Palmer. He's cut his teeth and paid his dues in smoky bars from all over the country to the famous venues of Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome, Kevin Palmer. How are you? Hey, hey, friends. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here with you, Johnny. You know, we're big fans of yours. I feel honored to be here. Oh, right on, man. It's good to get to have you. Man, let me, let me just say, first off, you know, for, for you folks listening to my radio, you can't, you can't see what I'm seeing. But uh, uh, first off, you got Elvis in the background. That's uh, that's 10 points there. Let's write that down. 10 points. <laughs> and you're and you're in all black. Yes, so sir. My first question, are, are, are you a Johnny Cash fan? Absolutely. Uh, Johnny Cash is what started it all for me. Uh, he was my first. He's the one that hooked me. Uh, as a kid, my mom listened to Johnny Cash. She listened to classic country and she, I remember she went out and bought a greatest hits cassette tape and I would listen to it whenever I would do the yard work because that was, that was immediately my favorite. And still to this day, he's one of my favorites. He's in the top, top three. You know, I love, uh, there's a lot of people out there. I love, but Johnny Cash, Waylon and Elvis, as you see on the wall, those are yeah. my top three favorites. Right on. And so how, how old were you when, when, when Johnny Cash hooked you? I was probably, well, um, it, you know, it's a real long story, but uh, whenever I was two years old, you know, I grew up, my family owned the uh, Boot Hill Jamboree, which was like a little Grand Ole Opry in our area. And it was awesome we had a lot of top performers come through we had crystal gale uh narvel Feltz is from down here so he headlined there a lot so every weekend i was seeing the best country music around wow and at two years old i wanted to be a country music singer and uh so i grew up listening to all that stuff and it's just kind of in my blood you know from the start and uh, whenever I was about eight, my mom got that greatest hits of Johnny Cash cassette tape. And that's the only cassette tape we had, by the way. But uh, when we would go outside and do the yard work, I would play that on the little Walkman. And, uh, you know, heck, I still got one. Little Walkman. Wow, look at that's that. all we had in those days, you know. It still, it still works? It still worked, yeah. Wow, right on. I only got a few tape, cassette tapes, though. I, I got Waylon and, and Willie. Right on. I, I, re I remember having to take uh, tweezers and fix that little felt, that little yeah. square felt thing, and then yeah. they get it in there, you know, and you got to take the pencil and turn, you know, turn it. Now, how many cassette tapes have you repaired? Oh, a million. Yeah, yeah, right on. So, so, uh, when did you, uh, what came first for you, uh, singing or playing the guitar? No, the guitar. I never the thought of myself as a singer. I never thought I was a good singer. Um, I learned everything. I'm self-taught at everything I've done. And, uh, you know, my dad was considered the musician of the family. We all looked up to him. He was the best one out of our immediate family um you know we come from a long line of musicians on both sides uh oni wheeler who played for roy in roy acuff's band they were the house pan for the grand Ole opry he's a relative and you know we had the boot hill jamboree going on and my dad was the guitar guy and i lost him at three years old so whenever that happened 
I was shell shocked by it and I stepped away from music because it was too painful. It brought back too many painful memories and I didn't want anything to do with it. And life kind of goes on. And I had a son born later in life that was born blind and with hydrocephalus. He's autistic, he's nonverbal. And when he was born, we really didn't know what we were doing as parents to try to raise this baby with all these uh, obstacles. So we were trying to learn as we went and he became very delayed. There weren't a lot of uh, resources out there for us to look to for help. And he became very delayed and we started to get worried, you know. And one day I was, I, I bought him a little toy keyboard because I tried to buy some things that made noise to try to stimulate him. And I had laid it in the floor and I noticed that he was trying to wiggle like a worm to get to it. And a light bulb came on and I started using that little toy keyboard to get him to scoot. And the next thing I knew he was up and crawling to get to music. And I thought, well, that's the ticket. I went down to the local music store and bought me an old guitar and didn't know how to play it. But that became our thing. We would sit together and listen to country music and pick on that guitar and try to figure out chords and scales and, and songs. And that led to him being able to stand up and he would shuffle down the wall to get to me on that guitar. Oh, so wow. that instantly became our thing. And that's what we've done ever since. You know, uh, most parents can enjoy watching movies or cartoons or things like that. But for us, that was our playtime was music. And it's been that way to this day. And eventually his, his legs got strong enough that he could walk and he still loves music. We still do it together. Uh, this is this is our music room slash bedroom. So every weekend we're in here jamming out together. And I always said, you know, whenever my dad died, the, for me, the music died. And whenever my son Kent was born, Kent brought it back to life for me. So it all came back full circle. What a wonderful story, man. That's uh, that sounds like a, um, a, a lifetime movie, you know. Um, well, that, you know, that's why I always say music is powerful because uh, music touches us all differently and in a different way. And I believe, you know, music can heal. Music can take you back in time. It can pump you up. Uh, it can bring back memories, you know, so quickly. It can put you in a place that you were. It can remind you of people and love and loss and it can heal you too because i feel like it healed a lot with me and him absolutely absolutely uh man that's such a touching story uh and, and you know it kind of reminds me i don't know i don't know if you ever saw the movie called touched by love uh it was about a girl with it's a true story about a girl uh with cerebral palsy and she didn't she didn't talk she was withdrawn and then she heard uh one of the uh uh, one of the nurses had taken her into town and she was in a wheelchair and they passed by uh, uh, a record store and she heard an Elvis record playing and she perked up and uh, eventually she started, it got to where she started reacting to his music. They started playing it for her. She started, and she eventually started talking and then she wrote letters to Elvis and letter after letter after letter never got a response and lo and behold, finally she got a letter. And that really did something for her. But it's called Touched by Love. You, you try and check that out. You, you, you love that movie. And, and how, old is, how old is Kent now? He's 21. 21, wow. 21, and yeah. So he reacts to music. Uh, is there a particular artist that you can really tell? Oh, that, yeah. That, yeah. There's, who's there's several of them. He's got several favorites. Uh, some of them surprise you sometimes. He really likes a guy named... Matt Anderson, uh, he's, he's not hit mainstream. You can find his videos out there on YouTube, but he really likes him. Um, 
he's got a bunch of favorites. He also loves uh what you know, Waylon, of course. He loves Elvis, Tony Joe White. All oh, right. He likes a lot of piano too. He likes Bruce Hornsby. Uh, he loves Leonard Skinner, I guess, because of all the different parts, the three guitar attack and the piano. Uh, he likes a lot of different stuff. And sometimes it, it may surprise you because he doesn't just stick to one genre or one style. He likes a lot of different things. That's awesome. And, and you know, I, I wanted to go back to what you're talking about music and, uh, it made me think of something I heard Wolfman Jack say one time. He said, music makes the whole world go round, baby. That's right. That's right. That's true. And that's true. And uh, what about Clayton Q? Does he like Clayton Q? Yeah. He actually got to the, this year we host, it was the first time we've done it, but we host our own music festival here where I live called the Arab Country Music Fest. Oh. And we had uh, Keith Burns headlining. Clayton Q co-headlining and then me playing. So he got to come to that and listen to all of us play live and he loved it. And he got to meet Clayton and he had a really good time. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and you know, that's another thing I, I noticed about you that you've uh, fallen into a great circle uh, of of uh artist. Uh and you just mentioned Keith and 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 Clayton. And, uh, you know, John Schneider kind of played a big part in get, getting uh, getting a, a circle formed with him guys, too. Yeah, and, I actually met Clayton at John Schneider's house. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, I've only been doing this for a year. No way. Yeah, it was, a week ago, it was a year. Wow. Um, the story behind how I got to do this is wild, too, but... Uh, I feel like, and I always say that um, God opened these doors for me, just the way that it's worked out. There's no other explanation. I couldn't have, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe that anything is luck. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And these doors kind of just opened up for me. Like I said earlier, I never thought I was a singer. I never wanted to be a singer. And um uh, people started seeing me play guitar with Kent and I got better over the years. I got a little better at it. And that led to local artists and bands started hiring me as a guitar player whenever they'd be in a pinch. And so I did that for years. I play for just kind of on call. Somebody call up and need a guitar player for the weekend. I'd go play with them, have a great time. And played for a lot of different people. And one day I had to go play a show in Indiana for the vets. It was a great cause. It was a wounded warrior event, raising money for our veterans, which I believe in a hundred percent. And they had Tom Wopat was the headliner. Okay. Tom Wopat was the big star on the show. They had the award-winning Night Owl Country Band playing. And uh, we were opening and I was just playing guitar and we kind of had a rough day and uh, the singer was losing his voice and he told me right before we went on stage, hey, if I give you the signal, he said, I'm not sure how my voice is going to hold up today. I'm losing my voice. I'm having problems. But if I give you the signal, you're going to have to take over. And I didn't have anything prepared or ready. And I hadn't really sang in front of a cr big crowd like that. So I was hoping that I didn't get the signal. But, you know, the rule is the show must go on. So as we were playing, I got the signal and I just started pulling songs out. And the first song I did, uh, this, this venue was packed with people and they were all seated, okay? Okay. And we were the opening act. I did the first song, and you could have heard a pin drop. Nobody reacted. Nobody was talking. Everyone was just looking at me. And I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to bomb this. But here we go. And I kicked off the second song, and a little girl, a little three- or four-year-old girl got up and came to the stage <laughs> 
and started dancing. And whenever she did, that place came alive and everybody started going crazy. And after that, uh, I went out on my own and started writing songs and recording and doing my own shows. Right. Uh, you know, I think I heard that story. Would, would that would that happen to have been Scott Haggard? Yes, sir. All oh, right, right. Now, now, what is Scott's relation to Merle? His son. I thought so. Yeah. I th yeah, I, I met Scott in um, Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, he was playing with uh, for, for James James Burton's uh, birthday bash and guitar festival, and um, it was actually pretty funny because uh, I, I met him. I had no clue who he was. I had walked out of the hotel. And he was standing outside, and um, it, him and another guy. And I was, walked up to bum a cigarette. <laughs> uh, he, uh, I, I had a big old pompadour, and and uh, he asked if I was there for the show. I said, I said, yeah, and I was one of the MCs. And he, uh, he said, oh, I'm in the show, and he told me his name. I said, Haggard. <laughs> you related to Merle? He said, well, that's my daddy. <laughs> you know, he's a great yeah. guy. I, uh, so what was the first song you ever wrote? Uh, the first song is called Thanks to You. Whenever I started playing, uh, there was a guy here in town that was a real good friend of mine, one of my best friends, and he was an old troubadour. He, he was older than me, but he had played through the 70s and 80s in a country band, traditional country band, and I thought he was an amazing singer. He was also a baritone singer just like me. And he was a wonderful singer, and he had kind of got to that point where he had retired, but he was doing it as a hobby for fun on the weekends. And he had his living room set up like a music menu with the, the lights and the stage speakers and all that stuff. It was, it was really kind of a wild experience, but he would, when he found out I was playing guitar he saw something in me he said he was big on he learned everything by ear he played by ear and he said uh, you got the ear for it and he started having me come over he's like just come over and hang out with me you know pick around on your guitar and that became a thing where whenever he would have his little weekend jams I'd go over there and I, I kind of learned a lot from him and uh Anyway, I, I was not a singer. I would not sing at this point. And he had a couple of songs that he had written, and I really loved his voice. So I wrote this. I wrote Thanks to You for him, and he used to do that before he passed away. And, uh, you know, now I that was the first one I ever wrote, and... Now I've got it recorded and it's it's streamed in over 88 platforms. Well, 88 platforms? I didn't realize that there were that many. Yeah, yeah, there's but, a bunch. Let's hear it. And, and, and now it's going to be uh, heard in 174 countries. Thanks to you, I kicked my bad habit. Thanks to you, learned to walk the line. Thanks to you, I quit running with them and no good friends of mine. Raising hell, shooting whiskey, wasting time. Thanks to you, I pass my time watching the clock on the wall. Thanks to you, I'm up all night. Why won't you take my call? Thanks to you, old Jim Beam's working double overtime. Convincing me that everything turned out fine.
next to you I pass my time Watching the clock on the wall Thanks to you I'm up all night Why won't you take my call Thanks to you Oh, Jim Beam's working Double overtime It's me Everything Turned out fine Thanks to you I'm learning Many lessons Thanks to you I'm finally getting mine Thanks to you I finally got a pretty damn good excuse Raising hell, shooting whiskey, wasting time Cause Thanks to you, I pass my time Watching the clock on the wall Thanks to you, I'm up all night Why won't you take my call? Thanks to you, old Jim Beam's working double overtime. It's me, everything turned out fine. It's thanks to you, I'm trying things that I've never tried before. Like climbing walls and sleeping pills, pacing these woods. Thanks to you, I'm sleeping less, but I'm drinking more and more. Thanks to you, thanks to you. Hey, that's nice. That's nice. You know, I I, I could uh, I, I could actually hear uh, Johnny Cash doing that song. You know, it's got it's got all the elements uh, for one of a, of a of a country song, you know. Uh, and I also noticed the uh, Jägermeister uh, sign in the back there. You know, you talked about Jim Beam and drinking, and you know, Jägermeister used to be my poison. Yeah, I, I don't drink no more now. I just freeze it and I eat it like a popsicle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that's a that's a really good tune there, you know, and. Uh, Again, I think uh, I think Johnny Cash would have been a fan of that song if he would have had a chance to hear that. Um, uh, and and to mention Johnny Cash, I wanted to bring this up before. Did, did I, when you met John Schneider, did y'all talk about Johnny Cash at all? No, he's he was so busy. I didn't get to talk to him much. Um, but you know, he, he he lived with John in June. Yeah, but, yeah, I knew that. Uh, I knew he stayed with him. I've seen some of the stories he's told about uh, staying with him and some of the things he learned from him. Yeah. Oh, I mean, how, how could you not? What an honor, you know, yeah. just, to, yeah. just to serve and, you know, get to know the man behind the image. You know, like Elvis once said, that the image is one thing and the man is another. You know, uh, uh, so, so your songs actually relate to, to your life. Usually, usually uh, most of the time, you know, the, the songs kind of uh, materialize on their own. They kind of come out on their own. Sometimes you can write a fictitious one, but usually the trick is to try to use enough symbolism to let people interpret the songs in their own way. And that's that's what I like. I like to see how people interpret a song because you can take the same song and three different people may take a different meaning from the same song that's true yeah yeah uh i heard something i, mean, I want to go to this real quick so i can uh you have something coming up i do have three movies that uh, i'm working on this year and next year for 2024 uh, they could try to pitch one of them to netflix i don't know the you can't do anything sitting on your rear, you know, you got to get up and you got to stir up the dust and do what you can. And we try to stay busy. <clears throat> like I said, uh, we, we're committed to three movies uh, starting next month into 
2024. Um, we're still we're working on an album too. We're finishing up an album that should be ready in a, another month or two. And now we say we are you talking about you, you and Honey Circle Rose? Uh, yeah. Uh, I used Honey Circle Rose on every song on this album. Uh, but uh, you know, I've I've been blessed enough that I've got good people. I say we because it's really a team effort. I've got good people that stood behind me this whole year through the very beginning and they you know they help out there's been many nights where i've get, got off work and uh had one of my teammates david's drove all night long to get me to a show where i could get enough sleep to get up and perform and right. you know i've had people david melinda uh, my brother you know my brother plays guitar for me i've, I've had people really coming to bat for me helping me out all this time so i've really been blessed right on i i, I admire that that you that you do say we and also uh that you brought up god because when when people tell me that uh, hey, hey they say good luck I, I hey you know what luck ain't got nothing to do with it you know it's it's a blessing you know I, I, luck is uh like, like you said, you don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck either. You know, it's everything's cause and effect. That's right. Everything's cause and effect. And um, so, you, you know, you, I say you stick, stick with God and stay within his guidelines, then you're going to be blessed. You know, you fall out of those guidelines, things, things, things just ain't going to go right. And, and people might say, man, you got bad luck. Ah, that ain't luck, buddy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> on the line, you made the wrong choice. And, you know, we're all human. We all make we all make mistakes. All make bad choices. When you get back in with God, there's forgiveness, and that's when the healing comes on. And again, music is healing. Well, you know, I feel like God's opened every one of these doors for me. I couldn't have done this on my own. I, I there's no way I could have gotten as far as I've already gotten on my own because uh, it don't, it just don't work like that. And I I just feel really blessed. I feel like. Uh, God's opened all these doors. So you just roll with the punches and be thankful and, and try to remember where you came from and give thanks to where thanks is due. And, and that's been our motto, you know, uh, when we started this a year ago, I wanted to take the music to somewhere that it had never been before. And I wanted to bring something home and we brought, and you know, tenfold back. You know, we've met so many great people and made so many great friends, and it's just been, it's been a crazy ride. So where do you, where, where do you do your recording at uh, again? Is there the, the recording studio and, and, and give some shout outs to uh, who's helped you along? You, you, you know, uh, like you said, it's, it's we. So if you want to give a shout out to any, you know, your musicians, your producers, now's the time to do it. Well, you know, I feel like I use all the best guys, you know, we use, uh, these guys are all friends and brothers of mine. I use my brother on lead guitar. He's got a real hot hand and every one of these guys also plays for another project, another band or for themselves. So, um, we use Andrew Faulkner on the bass. He's also, he's in five or six bands. Everybody wants him. You know, he's, he's as busy as you can get. He plays for Back Road Drive. Um, he's, he's in many projects and he's a great bass player. And a lot of people don't know him, but he's a great artist too. He's got some original songs that I really love. And I hope he gets them out there more because people need to hear them. We got Calvin Baggett on the drums. He's a wonderful drummer, wonderful guy. Uh, he also plays in two other bands. Um, like I said, my brother's on lead guitar. Uh, we've also used Detroit Dave on the bass. He's helped out, you know, because Andrew stays so busy and he's got so many commitments. Sometimes uh, Detroit Dave. Dave Swords, Dave Swords, uh, he comes in and helps us out. 
and he's done a fantastic job. He's a great player, great guy. Um, let's see, we got, uh, you know, Dustin and Thomas, Lana at Blue Creek. That's who we've recorded this album with. Uh, we, we stayed local and used them here in Missouri, Blue Creek Studios, and they've done a wonderful job and they've been great at working us in. And they are the ones that cut the video for Summer Rain. I felt like they did a wonderful job on that too. Uh, Thomas shot that. And um, we pulled in kind of a local legend. I think he's a local legend, uh, Jeff Womble on steel guitar and he's just knocked it out of the park. So I'm excited to let you guys hear some of his playing. Uh, he toured with Brian White back in the 90s. He's played with everybody, but uh, you, you've probably seen him play and not even known it. He toured with Brian White. Um, um, also, I probably, I got a little secret up my sleeve. We've got a new song coming out that we recorded in Nashville, Clayton Q and myself, we wrote it together around the campfire and we recorded it in Nashville. So watch for that one. Uh, me, Clayton and Randy Russell. Uh, we just got it finished. So it'll be coming out later this year. Right on, it was not a secret no more. <laughs> so you mentioned Summer Rain. Uh, that, that's your, your, your music video, which, uh, which I watched the other night and I, I just love. And, um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna close it out with that. But before we do, how can people find you on social media, uh, and how can they find your music? Well, you can find me on uh, the website, which is kevinpalmermusic.com, uh, and you can find me on over eighty eight streaming platforms. Just look up uh, Kevin Palmer Music. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, we're hitting all the big ones. So watch for me. We've got over seven new songs dropping within the ne next two months, and you'll be able to find them on there. So tell us about Summer Rain. Well, uh, Summer Rain, I, I wrote that song. It was kind of a turning point for me. I wrote this long before I was out performing. I'd actually just started playing guitar for hire and I had went through a rough patch in my life. Uh, I changed jobs. I had uh, just started going, I just started going through a divorce. I was kind of just into the new life like that. And I was sitting around one Saturday on a summer day, the sun was out shining and the rain had started pouring down and I was just kind of sitting there reflecting on life and my problems and my decisions. And it was a turning point because I came to the realization that every problem I had, I could blame nobody else for. Everything that had happened in my life and every mistake I'd made and every problem that I had was done by my own hand. And so I, spit that song out it took me less than five minutes i wrote it on the back of an electric bill and from that moment on i adopted the mentality that no matter what happens you know it's due to my hand and the choices that i've made and so uh the symbolism isn't really hidden that song is kind of straightforward but that's what it's about Right on. And let me let me ask you a question before before we uh, close it out and play Summer Rain. Uh, what, what what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned in life? Uh, that's it. You know, you need to you need to take full responsibility for everything that happens in your life. You know, I feel like we have more power than we realize. You know, you can it, you can very easily make somebody else's day or tear them down with just words. You know, and the same goes for your life uh, and how you look at it. Be thankful for what you have. Um, love the ones around you. We're not here very long. Do what you can to make the best life for you and those around you. You know, and if 
things aren't going great for you, we're all human. We all have problems and things we'd like to change, but use that power. You know, if you don't like your job, change it, get a different one. If you don't like the friends you're running around with, make some new ones. If you don't like your house, move. That's just how I feel about it. Um, accept that power and to speak life into your dreams and what you want to happen. Right on, right on. I love that. Well, Kevin, I want to thank you for being on Johnny Rock and Roll Radio, Radio's uh, Singer Songwriter Showcase. And uh, we look, look looking forward to meeting you one day. And we're going to close it out with Summer Rain. Uh, any parting words? Oh, just I, I'm just thankful for being here. Like I said, we're big fans of yours. Thank you for having us. It's an honor. I appreciate that. Right on. All right, folks. Uh, you've been tuned into the Johnny Rock and Roll Radio Show Singer Songwriter Showcase, and we're closing it out with Kevin Palmer's Summer Rain. I watch her go away, standing here drowning in the summer rain. Sunshine just go away, leave me drowning in the summer rain. Cause every blue sky seems thunder and rain, every pretty smile has tasted some pain. I wish I weren't always. One who's to blame and standing here drowning in the summer rain.